Kilo Delta 8. Mike, Yankee, Yankee. Kilo Delta 8, Mike, Yankee, Yankee, Roger. Ah, very good, yeah. This is Bob in Northeast Ohio, and uh, I heard that you were in Kentucky, right on the water, and I believe this weekend is Thunder over Louisville. Uh, will you be attending that? Uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> uh, only one time have I... Uh, uh, well, there's there's quite a few events. Uh, that is probably my favorite, but, uh, you know, in our location, uh, the best seat is on TV, if you follow my drift there. Well, yeah, I do. Um, we made the trip from uh, Northeast Ohio every year for about six years, and uh, it seemed like the last five or so, the weather was just so terrible, like 38 degrees in rain. Uh, we just decided from now on we're going to watch them on how just on the internet um, and you know the climate controlled area which is much nicer than freezing rain but uh, that is a great event seeing the fireworks in the air show I hope they have uh, a good turnout this year oh roger that and what is the uh, name of that way sir sure this is Bob uh, located here in northeast Ohio right on the Ohio PA border. Um, in fact, my road is the border. So uh, if you are driving north on my road, you are in Pennsylvania. And if you're driving south on my road, uh, you're here in Ohio in a small little town called Orangeville. Uh, in a house built in uh, So the town is called uh, Orangeville. And uh, when was the house built? 1848. Wow, man, that's, <laughs> is that like a castle? <laughs> no, far from. Uh, it's an old farmhouse, and uh, construction began in 1848, finished sometime around the 1850s, and uh, of course, there are not a lot of good, accurate re uh, records from back then in this area, but uh, you can still tell based on some of the documents that are available about the people that settled in this area. It's, uh, neat, quaint little community of about 100 people or so. I think our population is now approaching 140. So we're a uh, nice little tiny farm. Roger, Roger, Bob. Now, I am a proponent of uh, be all that you can be, and I'm just curious about your modulation. It looked a little peaky, like there might be a lot more modulation there, but uh, you might be under-modulating. Uh, come up on your mic uh, and let me see uh, what your signal does. Well, I was kind of far away from my mic before, and now I'm approximately two and a half inches. Did that change anything? Uh, drastically, Bob. That's exactly right, man. You need to uh, be running right there. Uh, matter of fact, if you came up a little bit closer, uh, let me hear you just a tad closer. All right, that's about two inches. And um, the reason I was so far away from the microphone before is I was double tasking, playing on the computer and talking at the same time. But now I'm right on top of the microphone. How was that? Okay, that's about 10 decibels, so let me give you an idea of what 10 decibels is. I'm going to pull off mic until I give you a, a minus 10 signal. Audio check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is exactly uh, where your level was uh, before you turned up, and this is uh, zero. Roger, Roger. That's a big difference. Yeah, probably uh, on this side, about 5. By the way, you're a solid 5.9 in uh, northeast Ohio. I heard your cue so earlier. Uh, you were just booming in here. And the band is kind of dead, aside from your signal and maybe two or three others that you on the band spoke. And uh, when I heard Kentucky, immediately I thought Louisville because it's the season. Roger, Roger, Bob. Now, do you, uh, I'm not sure of the radio you're on, but do you have uh, any uh, audio uh, audio uh, capabilities, uh, compressor, uh, or anything like that? Well, I think I have the capabilities. This is an ICOM IC7300, and I haven't really played with the audio. Um, I know there's a couple different, um, what's the word I'm looking for, curves I can set, and because I've had relatively good success, I didn't want to mess with something that wasn't broken. 
but to be more specific, is there a, a frequency range that you think should be brought out? Uh, is the high too loud, low too soft? What do you think? Well, this is not, uh, I'm not talking about EQ right now, I'm not talking about EQ, which is, has to do with the uh, tonality of the microphone, I'm just talking about the modulation level. There's a thing called peak average uh, uh, modulation. Uh, peak average modulation has to do with if, um, this how to see, figure out how to put this, if, um, in, if you're not limiting or compressing the audio, you have a, a peak every once in a while that's 100%, and you are reading and you are running 100% modulation. But peak average percent of modulation says uh, if we compress somewhat the top end of the excursions of the audio form, then uh, and then bring it up to 100, then our average peak modulation increases a bunch more and that average uh, peak modulation is what makes a station sound uh, so loud yeah, because it's not just uh, the peaks but they're compressing the peaks and bringing the whole thing up so the body of the uh, uh, of the voice becomes uh, so much uh, stronger than just a hitting a 100 percent every once in a while. So the the item that we would be looking for would be a limiter or compressor uh, in, in your menu. Well, I have to uh, I have to do some digging. I know I didn't turn anything on that wasn't already on. Um, you know, I have an older Kenwood. PS 830, which has uh, like a, a button for a processor, which is basically compressing. Um, so that was easy because it's a button. But on the 7300, I had to dig into the menu, which means I probably need to pull the CD out and see what I'm actually playing with. I'll have to take a look. Do you think overall I can use more compression or less? Oh, more. I don't think you're running any compression at all. Uh, the, by the peakiness of your modulation, I would say you're not running any uh, compression at all. So if you find the compression, um, I'll tell you what, does, does your radio have an ALC meter? I'm looking right now. ALC, yes, but um, see when I, when I talk this far away from the microphone, the ALC peaks are right where it wants to be. Now, there's no uh, unit of measurement on it, but I can tell the peaks are right at the top of ALP. Roger, roger. Now, wh what you want to be is um, to the right-hand edge of the ALC. Uh, you know, they say middle, but uh, that's... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> anyway, you want to be on the right, right edge of the ALC reading. Roger, roger. Yeah, Roger. I'll need to do some uh, research and see what I could do. I'm looking at the metering screen right now, um, and it shows SWR, a version of plate current, um, around 20 amps out is what it's putting. Uh, compression, okay, there is a level here for compression, and zero, 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 zero. Yeah, I have zero compression, so I'll have to learn how to uh, turn that up. And the range on that is from 0 to 20 dB. I uh, need to do some reading on that. I'm not exactly sure how to get to that portion of the radio. Oh, Roger that. Uh, Roger that. Well, you should um, should have a you know a book that would tell you uh, about that. And uh, I would start with uh, running just uh, uh, you know like about uh, 5 dB, or, or if you have a compression level, do it in the uh, middle of the uh, compression level. Just start at the middle, uh, and uh, when you do that you'll probably want to roll some of the bottom end of the audio. Now we would be talking about EQ and uh, so when you uh, turn the compressor on and you're running it just uh, at about the halfway scale you probably want to roll off some of the bottom end of your microphone on the EQ. You know maybe half of the capabilities of the roll uh, just to you know put it halfway on the roll side of the low frequency and then, you then go to the top end and put it about halfway to the uh, plus side on the high side of the uh, EQ you know so if you have a, a plus 10 minus 10 you know I would go uh, minus I would go plus 5 on the top end and minus 5 on the bottom end and I would leave uh, the middle range uh, alone 
alone. The the uh, the middle range I would not touch. Roger. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. I just uh, on that last transmission, I played with some of the settings. I turned my mic gain up so I can speak a little bit farther away from the mic, and I turned my compression up to ten. But I think that's over twenty decibels. So I'm going to bring my compression down, down, down to right there which is around 10 dB compression. And now I'm going to bring my mic stand down to 60 because my ALC was off the chart. So right now I'm at 60% mic gain and my compression is four. My on the meter is around 10 dB. How does that sound? Oh, much better, much better. You did a great job there. Now, uh, can you get to the EQ? Oh boy, let's take a look. There's <laughs> in here somewhere. Let's take a look. I'm going to keep looking while uh, you return here. Roger, Roger. Well, you have uh, increased uh, dynamically your average percentage of modulation through the use of uh, compression. You <laughs> and you were right. That first uh, setting, uh, I could hear flies walking on the uh, walls there, and I could hear your voice bouncing off the walls. So you were right. You did have too much compression, and you pulled it down to a nice, uh, a nice uh, level there. I think that's an almost ideal uh, amount of compression, maybe a tad more, but I would stay right where you are for the moment. If you can get to your EQ, I would take uh, the time, they're usually a three band EQ, uh, simplistic uh, three band EQ. I would take the top uh, frequency, the highest frequency, and uh, put, uh, roll it up to uh, plus five, and then I would go to the bottom frequency and roll it minus five. So top five on the top and minus five on the bottom. Roger? Well, I know what you're saying and um, I have not been able to find it, so I'll need to pull the, pull the menu out and take a look here. This is still where I was originally, uh, compression at four, which equates to around 10 dB on the uh, compression. The ALC, the peak, looks to be right at the top of the range, and I'm still, yep, everything looks okay. I'll need to find that EQ, though, but uh, I do appreciate your time, because I never would have gone into compression or increased my mic gain had you said that, so uh, thank you very much. Roger, Roger, and uh, it should be. Uh, com uh, uh, I'm sorry, EQ should be right there with uh, mic uh, processing capabilities. It should be right there along with uh, compression, because compression is just uh, another uh, entity as far as uh, mic processing. So uh, keep looking for that EQ, and uh, like I say, jot down these, jot down the um, uh, the capabilities here. I would go plus five on the top minus five on the bottom and uh, if you if you know I would start with there and uh, then uh, you know whatever you might need to do after that Roger yeah Roger I will do that well anyways uh, I want to thank you uh, for your time explaining that to me today and it'll give me something to do this afternoon when I get a little bit more free time to play on the radio so uh, again thanks a lot for the help today I'm going to let you go because I don't want to tie the band up any longer, and I believe I have some chores to do. I actually took the day off to uh, do some spring cleaning, but uh, I got a little distracted when I heard you on the radio there. <laughs> I didn't want to let that go. So uh, thanks again for your time. I'll say 73, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up later and I can try out that EQ. Kilo Delta 8, Mike Yankee Yankee, this is Bob 73. Roger, Roger, Bob. Three's out of way, sir. Uh, your uh, audio is uh, a lot better. Uh, you know, you were starting right at my noise level, and uh, when we finished, you were five over my noise level. So uh, it made it from almost impossible to copy you to uh, uh, a pretty good uh, signal to copy you. So it does, you know, makes a difference here. Get that average percentage of modulation up. Three's, Bob. Uh, have a good day, sir. Don't work too hard. We'll catch you later. This is a Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor.